Welcome back to my channel. Today we are having a look at connecting a Windows CE device. We're going to use this Genada 720 to Windows 10. So stay with me, I'll show you how to do it and how to get the most out of it. So for this demonstration on connecting Windows CE to Windows 10, we're going to use this Genada 720. Um, it's a bit tatty this one because it's been my go-to for a number of years. Um, we're using it mainly because a, I have the cradle, and B, it's the first with a USB connectivity. This just simplifies the connection process because we don't need a serial to USB adapter. So we're going to go with that. And the computer we're going to connect it to today is the GPD Pocket 7. Um, this is a Windows 10 uh, laptop with a 7-inch display. Um, it's actually a great machine and we will review it at a later date. But for now, let's boot it up and look at getting connected. So before we start, you're going to need a couple of bits of software. You need to install .NET 3.5 and you also need the Windows Media Device Center helper execute and that's available from Juniper Systems and um, I've put links in the description below and the other thing you're going to need is if you are wanting to synchronize your diary you're going to need a copy of Outlook up to 2013 will work and normally these will come with the palm top when you purchase it on the CD <laughs> So now we've got .NET 3.5 installed, we just need to connect into the Cradle. So connect up your uh, Cradle and drop your Genada in. We can hear it connect into Windows. At this point, Windows isn't going to respond. That's because it needs to install the Windows Mobile Device Center. And that's what we're trying to get it to do. So now we've got the Cradle installed, we're going to reinsert the HP Genada back into the drive. And now it's installing Windows Mobile Device Center. Next we need to run the Windows Media Device Center helper. Oops. I think you need to run it as an administrator. One second. What this does, it um, alters some of the registry files. You'll find if you go to the um, link in the description, it'll tell you which registry files it alters. Um, and I think that's what this file does. Great. So Windows Mobile Device Center is now installed and we've run the help execute. We'll boot it up. It does take a while to start. And in addition to that, we can expect it to need to do an update. So we'll let it run for a minute, and then we'll check the updates, and we should be good to go. So Windows Mobile Device Center has failed to start. So we're going to check the updates and have another look. Now we've got to here and it's not connected, you can unplug your um, Genada, your palm top. We're going to need to run the helper once more because essentially what it's done is installed the updates. So we need to run as administrator 
Um, so it's run the update, so it's now updated itself. So we need to update the registry again. And that means we need to restart the computer again. So I'll just close out of this. And do a restart. So last thing we need to do, let's plug our computer back in. Here we go. Great, we're in, connected. So next we need to set up our device. So we can choose what we want to synchronize. For the moment we won't synchronize any files, but because I have Outlook installed, we can synchronize contacts, calendar and tasks all with Outlook. Hit next. Let's call it J720. And set it up. Super, it's now connected. If we hit this, it'll uh, synchronize. So now that we've synchronized some contents from Outlook, let's check that it's worked. So we'll use this shortcut um, and we can see edit film is in there. And if we look at the to-do list using this shortcut, there it is. Don't forget to register. Added nicely. The synchronization works very well in both directions. There is no file conversion. So you need to look at alternatives for file transfer. We'll have a look at some of those in a moment. So I've set a few things up on the Genada and um, I've made some sample documents from the various things. So there's a couple of samples in there that are there already. And um, the plan maker sample will come to last because that's not in built software. And um, so we'll have a look at the file transfer. So we'll browse the files on this device. Here we are. And my documents. Perfect. Um, so we're going to drag a few of these across. So you can see straight away Windows doesn't recognize all of these. Um, but if we bring them onto the desktop. So this is Pocket Excel saved as an Excel 97. And we'll just check if it opens or not. Lovely. That looks fine. Obviously, using Pocket Excel, you can't have graphs or pictures or anything exciting. It's basic formatting only. This is Ink Writer, uh, the one where you can write on the screen. So it doesn't know which app to use. Let me just see if it'll open it in Word because that's the one I'm expecting it to open in. Nope, doesn't like it. So just so you know, Ink Writer should have looked like that. Um, it, you can handwrite in it, and, and I've put some text in for different samples, but clearly Word can't open it natively. That's good to know, though, um, because obviously we want to know what we can and can't transfer. Uh, Northwind is a database file that will not be compatible, um, and Overview won't be compatible either. That's a, um, a PowerPoint file, but it's of an outdated format, and it's for the handheld PC only. So we'll come to the plan maker sample at the end. So this is Pocket Excel. So without conversion, so I saved it as Excel 97 on the machine, um, but this is a Pocket Excel, so it doesn't really know what to do with it. I will try Excel and see if it will open it. I don't think it's even offering as Excel. So I think we'll just abandon that one. And uh, we'll try the next one. So I did a recording. It should be compatible, I would have thought. A little bit bigger, so it takes a while to transfer. And let's see what makes of it. This is recorded in 16-bit mono for good results. So there we are. So you can drag a recording file across and that works seamlessly. So that's good. Um, we've got a rich text format document. That should work fine. Lovely, yep, yeah, there's my samples. We've got various formatting options. Again, in Pocket Excel, you can't add any pictures or anything exciting, um, so don't expect to be doing any masterpieces of design. And the last one, this is Pocket Word saved as Word 97, which should open fine. And um, it'll be interesting to see if we amend this, whether it'll open on the Pocket 
on the handheld PC. So lovely. So let's cross that off. Yes, save the changes. Let's come out of that one. And we're just gonna drag it back. Where are we? It's moved it over here, of course it has, thank you, Windows. So we'll drag it back and we'll see if we can reopen it in a moment. Copy and replace. That's great. And then I wanted to show you this last. So Plan Maker. So Plan Maker is some third party software. It's, they also do um, another piece of software called Text Maker. And they're difficult to get hold of these days, but basically they allow you to have fully editable um, Excel and Word files compatible with Office 2003. You can have pictures and, as you can see, graphs and all the rest of it, and they will transfer seamlessly backwards and forwards. So I can open the same file on here. Obviously, the smaller screen means we don't see it all at once, uh, but once it loads... Lovely, so we've got the same data, um, same formatting and colours, and we've even got the graph on there. Uh, if we reduce the size a bit, we can perhaps get a bit more on the screen. Sure, there we are. Um, so this allows you to do basically anything you can do in Excel 2003, you can do on your palm top, wherever you are, and just swing those files backwards and forwards, and it'll work seamlessly. So we'll just try that Word document we transferred back. Yep, there's the new addition, so we know it's worked. You can open a, a Word 97 document directly on here. And um, if it saves as 2003, I doubt that that'll work, um, but it will work in TextMaker. TextMaker and PlanMaker are part of SoftMaker Office. It's currently not available, or it wasn't available. At some point, hopefully, it will become available again. I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of connecting your Windows CE palm top to Windows 10. As you can see, it involves a bit of restarting and updating and all the rest, but it's not that tricky. Um, if Windows does an update, which it periodically does, you will need to repeat the last couple of steps. That's just a fact of life. As you can see, the file transfer works very well and the synchronization works well if you've got Outlook installed. Um, the only other thing I will say, uh, will mention, I should say, is um, you can use the conduit for other things. So you can install applications off Windows 10, um, which you can't when you connect Palm to Windows 10, but we'll come to that in the future. And um, you can also use it for other um, applications that use that conduit. So Side Window is an example, which allows you to use it as a second screen. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you do have any comments, please add them below. I'll happily respond. Um, also, just don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Thank you very much. Bye for now.